How do you feel about hi-fi products made in China? Does it turn you off? Will you not buy it because it's made in China? Today, we are diving into this discussion to weigh the pros and cons to buying hi-fi products made in China. Let's get to it. There's a common misconception that made in China implies poor quality. However, many renowned companies produce high quality goods in China. Quality depends more on the company's standards, not the country where the product is necessarily made. China is currently the world's largest manufacturing hub, so of course you are going to see an ocean of cheap products that aren't really worth your attention because there is just that much being pumped out of Chinese factories. Where I have an issue with Chinese made products isn't with the quality of the products per se, because if you can do some research, you can easily sidestep the junk and find some really cool hidden gems. I asked my community here on YouTube whether they would buy from China and this is how they responded. 29% said they would buy from China, 11% said they would not buy from China, and 60% said they would only buy if the product was well recommended, which puts a lot of pressure and responsibility on reviewers and consumers who share their opinions. There are a few major concerns that I wrestle with myself when it comes to dealing with products made in China. First, there's the question of labor conditions, which honestly can be quite troubling. Then there's the matter of intellectual property rights. That's been a major issue for a while now. Lastly, I'm a bit wary about product warranties and after sales service, especially when it comes to spending a lot of coin on high-end hi-fi gear straight from China. On top of all of that, I'm a fan of supporting local industries and economies just like anybody else. So how do we navigate these substantial challenges? This isn't small potatoes here, but significant issues have been escalating over the years due to the massive amount of goods being churned out in China. It's something we really need to grapple with. So let's begin with a topic that's been making headlines for quite a while, labor conditions in China. One name that stands out in this discussion is actually Apple, which has faced its fair share of scrutiny over the years. Particularly, the spotlight has been on the operations of Foxconn, a major electronics manufacturer that's headquartered in Taiwan, but has factories packed all over the mainland China. Back in 2010, a deeply troubling series of events put the spotlight on the labor conditions in these factories. A number of people who decided not to be with us anymore at Foxconn, I can't say the other word, at Foxconn's Shenzhen factory, the place where, you know, a lot of Apple's products come to life, sparked international concern. Reports linked these heartbreaking incidents to brutal working environments, long hours, low wages, intense pressure, and substandard living conditions in the factory's dormitories. As the world peered in, a cascade of labor rights violations was revealed by media outlets, workers clocking in well beyond on the legal limit of 36 overtime hours a month became a common theme, with some even pushing past 60 hours of overtime. Safety didn't seem to be a top priority either, with reports of dangerous conditions leading to serious accidents. In fact, in 2011 and 2012, explosions attributed to aluminum dust from iPad case polishing rocked the factories. Explosions. Instances of underage labor came to light, along with unsettling accounts of physical and verbal abuse and even humiliation by management. This is horrible. In the face of this grim reality, Apple has attempted to take steps to address these issues, but there's no sugarcoating it. The efficacy of these efforts has come under fire. Despite the measures taken, reports of labor rights abuses in factories churning out Apple products continues to surface, even today. It's a complex and challenging situation to say the least. So moving on to our next concern, there's this tricky situation around intellectual property rights, or IP rights for short. You see, one of the persistent concerns in doing business with China is the protection, or sometimes the lack thereof, of these rights. IP rights are basically the bread and butter for companies, especially those in the tech and hi-fi industry, as they protect the unique designs, technologies, and ideas that give a company its competitive edge. Now, why is this an issue in China? Well, it's because there's been a history of IP rights infringement cases where designs and technologies developed by one company are copied and used by another without permission. This doesn't just undermine the original creator's investment in research and development, but also their brand reputation when inferior copies flood the market. That brings us neatly to the matter of counterfeit products. Counterfeit goods are basically a physical manifestation of IP rights infringement. 
arrangement. These are products that mimic popular goods, often down to the branding and packaging, but usually without the same quality control or standards. It's a bit like a game of whack-a-mole for companies trying to protect their brands against counterfeiting. No sooner do they shut down one counterfeiter, another pops up. And while this isn't an issue exclusive to China, the country has gained a bit of a reputation due to the high volume of counterfeit goods that have been traced back there. You can see why these are concerning issues, right? It's not just about companies protecting their investments, but also about consumers being duped into buying inferior products. And for high-end industries like Hi-Fi, where every small detail can make a big difference in performance, counterfeit goods can be a serious problem. It's a complicated issue that needs a serious approach. So one thing that can cause a bit of worry when buying expensive tech like hi-fi gear directly from China is the question of warranty and after sales service. It's not that Chinese companies don't provide these. Many do. The issue is more about how effective these services are, especially for customers who are halfway across the world. Think about it this way. When you buy a product locally, or at least from the same country, it's usually straightforward to get it repaired or replaced under warranty if something goes wrong. You have local customer service representatives who speak your language, understand your concerns, and you generally have consumer protection laws on your side. But when you buy directly from China, China, things can get a little more complicated. For one, there might be a language barrier when dealing with customer service, and cultural differences might further complicate communication. Plus, you're dealing with different consumer protection laws, which might not offer you the same level of protection you're used to. Then there's the logistical side of things. If you need to send a product back for repair, you're potentially dealing with hefty shipping costs, long wait times, and the hassle of possibly dealing with customs paperwork. And if the warranty process takes a while, you're stuck without your gear in the meantime. In China, there's a slightly different landscape when it comes to return and refund policies, especially compared to what we might be used to in the West. Some of the bigger Chinese companies or those that do a lot of business internationally tend to have return policies that mirror what we're familiar with. But that's not a hard and fast rule across the board. Of course, this isn't to say that all Chinese companies offer poor after sales service far from it. Many are making serious efforts to improve their customer service and make it easier for international customers. It's in their best interest. But it's definitely something that can be a concern, particularly for those investing in high-end hi-fi equipment. It's a delicate dance, balancing the desire for quality gear at competitive prices, which China does offer, and with the need for reliable and convenient customer support. Now, many Americans do prefer their hi-fi to be made here in the U.S. Hi-fi equipment from the United States has a rich history and has often been associated with high quality. Some of the most iconic hi-fi brands manufactured here in the U.S. have been influential in defining the audiophile culture. This legacy brings a sense of trust and prestige to American-made hi-fi gear. When someone purchases a piece of American hi-fi, they're not just buying the sound quality, but also a piece of this illustrious history. There's also the element of local pride and supporting local businesses. People like the idea of supporting American jobs and the local economy, which is a sentiment that extends far beyond just hi-fi equipment. Now, as to why American-made hi-fi is not as readily available as it once was, there are a few key factors. One of the main reasons is the shift in manufacturing to countries where labor and production costs are lower, such as China. Over the past few decades, many industries, including electronics, have moved much of their manufacturing overseas to, you know, remain competitive. Manufacturing in the U.S. is generally more expensive due to higher labor costs, stringent regulations, and other overheads. These costs then get passed on to the consumer, making American-made products more expensive. In contrast, products made in China or other countries with lower manufacturing costs can be sold at more competitive prices, which is a big factor for many consumers. This shift hasn't been without controversy, of course. Some some people worry about job losses or lower quality products, but it's worth noting that just because something is made in China doesn't necessarily mean it's of lower quality. Many things are designed here. There's a wide range of products coming out of China from budget to high end, and many of them do offer excellent value. It's also important to remember that even if a product is assembled in the US, many of the components are likely sourced from other countries. So the lines of what counts as made in USA can actually be a bit blurry. You know, whether we're fully on board with products being made in China or not, it's become the new norm. It's a lifeline for American businesses, helping them to stay afloat. We might have our qualms about the business practices in China, 
And yes, we're aware of the challenges, but in the end, our choices are pretty limited. If you take a moment to look around, you'll see the influence. Most of our everyday electronics, right down to the phone you're using to watch this video, bear the Made in China label. So as much as we might wrestle with the issues, we're firmly anchored in this reality, and that's something to think about. I would love to hear from all of you, my community, on the subject. I am interested in your take on the matter. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video and got something from it, I would love for you to escape with the like button. Maybe she knows. What say there, fussy britches? Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified every time a new video is born. With all that said and done, I will see you on the next one, friends. Take care.